lads, it's Tottenham. For so many years, Sir Alex Ferguson's words made famous in Roy Keane's autobiography really did some spurs up. Pre-football, a lot of flair players with more than enough ability to hurt you, but they never had the character to see the job through. Even when Harry Redknapp had Spurs firing and made the top four, it felt more like a good bunch of individuals hitting form at the right time, rather than the result of any sustained plan or approach. But now nicely positioned in the Premier League and having finished top of a Champions League group that included Real Madrid and Borussia Dortmund and with the game in hand, there can be no doubt Spurs have shaken off their Spursy tag. Remember when he arrived on these shores to replace Nigel Adkins at Southampton? Nigel's doing a great job, they said. He didn't even speak the language, bemoaned dads up and down the land. Well, fast forward four years and Adkins is unemployed while Poch is hot property. But how did he turn Spurs' fortunes around? Pochettino's core setup isn't especially radical. He favours a 4 2 3 1 with attacking fullbacks, a solid base in midfield, three roaming attacking midfielders, and a high press. But the roles he asks his players to perform means it's reductive to simply label Spurs as a 4 2 3 1 team. In fact, their system is a fluid one which allows them to slot into multiple formations. One central midfielder verges on being a third centre back, while the other has licence to break up play and get forward a role that's been perfected by Moussa Dembele. The attacking midfield three swarm defenders with an aggressive press when they're in vulnerable positions and glide across the width of the park, making them hard to pick up. Pochettino's approach to the press isn't as aggressive as some and he leaves the specifics of when to put the opposition under pressure up to his players. Spurs had this down to a tee during their final season at White Hart Lane, compressing an already small pitch into a tiny one when out of possession and attacking at devastating speed with the ball. The so-called Wembley curse over Spurs had a lot to do with the larger pitch dimensions at the National Stadium compared to their old home where they went the whole of last season unbeaten. And while they've got over the initial National Stadium hoodoo, Spurs still aren't blowing teams away like they were last season and that remains one of Pochettino's biggest challenges going forward. The movement and fluidity of the front four is consistently one of Tottenham's biggest attacking threats. Yet that includes the centre forward too. Harry Kane is the perfect Poch striker with that special ability to drift wide into the channels, pick up the ball and still be effective. Interchanging forwards are crucial to the Argentine style of play and he often gets the best out of them. Ricky Lambert and Adam Lallana's form under his tutelage at Southampton earned the move to Liverpool. Relying on a core squad of players who understand and have the attributes to comply with their specific roles as well as pulling in the same direction, Pochettino rotates sparingly and the loss of one or two players can disrupt the team badly. His training sessions are brutal, with big emphasis on fitness. Carl Walker and Ricky Lambert have lifted the lid on their intensity, with the ex-England striker even saying that Pochettino broke him. But many have lauded his methods, including England boss Gareth Southgate, who has praised the fitness levels of Harry Kane and others, saying he's hopeful it can invigorate the three Lions ahead of Russia 2018. Don't believe us? Well, here's official proper football expert Gillian Balagay. In the training ground, he manages to entertain the players, that's very important, and to keep them motivated, and that's very difficult at the top level. He demands the players to recover the passion that they had as young footballers, as kids even, when they first had a ball in their hands. He wants everybody to have passion for what they do, and he tries to keep that passion uh, from the players, from the coaching staff, from himself at all times, that's crucial. It's his way or the highway, and that's why he chose to streamline the squad he inherited from Tim Sherwood. Players deemed not suitable for his system like Emmanuel Adebayor, Nabil Bentaleb, Andros Townsend, Tom Carroll and more all left within a season or two of Poch's arrival. But perhaps one of the most striking aspects of the Argentinian's managerial style is his bravery and willingness to put faith in young players. OK, Harry Kane was hard to ignore, but Pochettino handed Deli Alli 33 Premier League appearances after playing in League One with MK Dons the previous season. Danny Rose, Ben Davis, Kieran Trippier and now Harry Winks have and are coming on leaps and bounds under the Argentinian. Simultaneously a hard taskmaster and an arm round the shoulder manager, the mixture of personal and technical development that players often experience under him leads to a very strong bond between them and Pochettino. One that means they're willing to run through walls for him, subscribe to his methods in absolute terms and stay on and develop at Spurs, whose wage cap means they earn significantly less than they could elsewhere. Pochettino is different, special. He's a manager that engages with the players through empathy. He tries to understand them, he listens to them, and when he gets into the heads, and that tends to be done quite easily uh, and quite early, I think players give him much more than they will give a normal, another manager, say. 
uh, that empathy, that emotional intelligence is what makes him different. He's an observer and he's uh, driven by sensations. He feels that to actually get a team to the maximum of their potential, you have to enter the mind of the players, uh, not just give them orders. Pochettino might not have collected a trophy to match the plaudits he's received yet, but it surely can't be too far away. He's already achieved what once seemed impossible, turning Spurs from a punchline into an elite outfit. The only question now is, whether he'll be picking up his first piece of managerial silverware in North London or further afield.